a, a good example of how this works for developers is uh, and, and companies is uh, if you look at uh, there, there are a couple of verticals where we see a lot of traction. Um, one would be iPhone applications. There's a ton of iPhone applications being written now, and most of them, a huge portion of them, have web backends that they work with. And uh, a lot of times, these iPhone developers, they're really strong Objective C developers. They're really good at the sort of native application, but they're not really strong web scale developers. And so. Uh, we've had a number of these cases, I mean hundreds of these applications where basically they write the iPhone app and they have a web backend and the iPhone app does really well and it gets into the, you know, the, the featured list or whatever and they start getting tens of thousands of installs uh, per hour even in some cases and they need to scale the backend. And uh, with Heroku, the, 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 the pattern is that they, they start scaling up, their query starts slowing down, so they come to Heroku and they just start turning up the knob. Oh, I, I need more dynos, I need more workers, I need more of this, and you just sort of turn those knobs. And so managing the operations just becomes about resource allocation rather than configuration or re-architecting the app. Uh, and then when you need to actually do some optimizations, uh, it's very easy to see what you need to do. So a lot of times, you, know, you go into New Relic, for example, if you want to look at your performance and you see that your response time is slowing down and you can see that, oh, you know, the, the, the actual individual response time is fine, but you're, you're queuing up a lot of requests. You don't have enough app servers, just, you know, not enough concurrency. And that's when you turn up that knob and you're done. And it's, you, know, you say, okay, well, I need 30 more app servers. Click. They're all launched in less than two seconds because we're not dealing with servers. We're, you know, we're dealing with a large pool. So we're just bringing up 30 more processes for you that are distributed across our grid. So there's no contention for, for compute and you're done. Uh, now, at some point, you can't do that anymore. You end up with slow, slow queries, right? You actually have slow, slow requests. And then you look and you say, "Oh, uh, we've got these requests that are actually burning up a lot of our concurrency, but these are mostly static pages. So I can just throw a, an HTTP cache header in there that says, you know, max age five minutes, right? And you throw that in there, and or e tags for validation. There's a bunch of different ways to do it. And all of a sudden, you can see that you know the the load just completely drop down on the application. That buys these guys another two weeks or or, or whatever it is. Uh, and that's because we have this HTTP caching tier that's just it's built into the platform. So you just have to set those headers, and now all those requests are being handled by our cache rather than your dynamic app servers. And then you know eventually you run out of those optimizations if you keep growing, and now you need to do more. And you know we have a lot of guys who've gone literally in a matter of days from deploying their application with no traffic to hundreds of requests per second, including hundreds of writes per second in some cases. And they just, this is what they did. They just kept turning up these knobs and then they made these optimizations. Uh, memcache is another great example. So, you know, memcache is normally something that you don't really add to an application until you're fairly large because installing memcache, it's a little bit finicky and getting it up and running and managing it as a cluster is, is a bit complicated. Uh, it's, it's kind of a, a time sink, but again, it's built into the platform through our partner Northscale through the add-on system. So you get to that point where you've done all your HTTP caching and you've got the right concurrency and you still have slow queries and you say, oh, well, these are expensive database queries and we can cache these with more performance. You can one click add memcache. You know, do I want one gig of memcache? Do I want 50 gigs, 100 gigs? How much memcache do I want? You just one click and now it's there. It's available to your app. and. Um, Rails, which is what most of our applications are written in, has some really nice uh, framework, uh, what are called gems, nice libraries for, for accessing memcache. So now you just start caching those queries and now your load drops back down again and you buy yourself another you know, day or week or month or, or whatever it is. Um, and people just repeat that pattern. Uh, and then you go further, you start sharding your data, you have more than one database. A lot of people start using more than one type of database. They've got a SQL da database from us, in a lot of cases Postgres, where they're using MySQL from Amazon or somebody else. Uh, and then they find that there's some data model that uh, is more appropriate for a non-relational database. And so they start using MongoDB, or they start using Couch, or they start using Redis. And these things are all accessible just with one click through our add-ons. So it's a really good, it's a really good case study for um, sort of ease of use and the ability to scale uh, quickly.